the main racial theorists of the day started saying that yes, actually, Jews are Negroes. What's up, family? This is your man, not your boy. Go black to Africa. So I'm here in Zambia, chilling out, and I want to bring you all a video. I want to bring you all a video because this right here is proof that they've been hiding the secrets of who we really are. Being Jew people who was in the mix of slavery, taking around the world, and we're gonna listen to each one of these little tad bits along my trail, my journey, of many people, whether they're scholars, whether they are historians, where there are archaeologists, just to prove and for you to add the pieces up so that it will draw to you a picture. This is what I want each and every one of us to do, is to really, for those who are in Americas, you see, there are people who are planted on streets, people who are planted around the world, who are giving you just a bit. But listen to this video, and I'll be back. Hey, first book on the number, I finished up on 20 minutes, uh, 60 minutes. And, uh, you know, it was on the front page of the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal, all over the place. Fantastic, incredible publicity. Why? Why is it, I thought, that black Jews are so deeply troubling to somehow to Western sensibilities? It, was a, it really puzzled me for a long time. And it was interesting, it was fascinating to see that Enlightenment scholars at the end of the 18th century were equally puzzled. And the reason that they were puzzled, why were they puzzled? They were puzzled because they didn't know how they became black. So why then, all of a sudden, um, do the people that we're all interested in, this group, everybody here is interested in the question of Jews, as we say, uh, of color, um, throughout the world. I mean, that's one of the, these are the groups, uh, uh, Kulanu and me, uh, you know, we've been very interested in. At the end of the 18th century, and for the first half of the 19th century, Jews of color were not marginal. They were mainstream preoccupations of people. Uh, that's something which I'm the first person to point out. It was interesting for racial theorists number of reasons. One of the reasons is that you've got, for the first time, the idea that Jews are multicolored, right? And so that in itself is kind of interesting, but the underlying thing is the proof that this provides to the monogenists. And they took up the cause of all of the black, brown, Jewish communities throughout the world, like, you know, like it was... Um, the most fabulous, fabulous thing that they could imagine in support of their own ideas. And they would spend their times traveling the world and looking for new black Jewish communities and they could bring these back and feed them into the, into the, into the racial uh, uh, kind of machine, the group. All of these kind of black Jewish group, brown, they were all kind of dragooned as part of the holy crusade of proving the unified origins of mankind. What a noble thing that turned out to be. And of course, with Darwin, uh, that pretty much marks the end of, uh, of polygenism, except that even today there are you know, there are genetic scientists who fiddle around with the with the proof in such a way that it looks as if, you know, there are races and that they're kind of significantly different from each other. But it really is not the case. So um, should we go to the question about conflation? What does conflation mean? Were there different kinds of conflation of Jews and blacks over time? Or should we go to the question of looking at your slides? Well, let me quickly just deal because the conflation is in the title of my book. And I think just to say what I mean by it would be a good introduction really to the slides. And Bonnie sort of mentioned um, very kindly a chapter in 
um, uh, that uh, 19, uh, 2013 book. Uh, and it, there was nothing original about that. Um, there's a great uh, scholar by the name of Sander Gilman, um, who really is the father of uh, all studies about the perceptions of the body of the of the Jew. He's an extraordinary scholar and I, you know, I owe a huge amount to, to everything that he's written and I admire him enormously. And so a long time ago, you know, he, he wrote that, um, you know, there was a kind of medieval perception uh, that Jews were black. And there's plenty of proof that uh, within Europe, uh, the Jews were considered to be kind of black. There are many images um, of Jews be being black. And um, even if they weren't black, they were not even slightly black. They were kind of considered to be black in one way or another. So blackness and Jews really went hand in hand. If you read his work or if you read my work, and particularly if you read this new book, you will see the multitude of examples of it. And if you go, for instance, into the, into the marginalia, uh, you know, the illustrations in uh, English or uh, European prayer books in the 13th and 14th centuries, you frequently, frequently, frequently see hook-nosed Jews wearing Jewish hats and um, with black faces. So the idea that Jews were black it was definitely there. Uh, you know, before the uh, before the Enlightenment period, and so we should let's go to the slides now. Just a sec, because I just need to okay. say, in the nineteenth century, the idea of uh, Jewish blackness was reinforced by the discovery of all of these actual black Jews in India and Africa, all over the place, and by eighteen fifty. The, the main racial theorists of the day started saying that, yes, actually, Jews are Negroes. Negroes, in some way, are also Jews. This is the conflation. It's partly political, it's partly uh, metaphorical, and it's very, very uh, significantly uh, biological. So what do you think? Now, let me say this right here. Don't disassociate yourself with anybody because of what some say that maybe who you are or where you come from. We are all a people. But the thing of it is, is that if a person doesn't have a foundation of their roots, if a person don't know who they are, they can be misguided and led into other places, other religions, other cultures, behave in different fashions. But when you know that you are connected, the original to the most high, that means then that you have a standard, you have a culture of discipline, a culture of righteousness, that you should be the voice to the world. So let's keep this in mind as I begin to delve even deeper into the truth of the matter. This is your man. Not your boy. Go black to Africa. Think about it. 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 Think about it.